Hey there, Cinephiles. Matt Jarbo here with Rubuck Theater. And I want to talk about something that's going to be controversial. And I think we need to have this conversation, especially if you like movies, if you like the process of making movies. And if you want to see Hollywood continue, things are going to change. Studios are going to need to find ways to cut down on costs. This largely can be aided by uh, getting rid of a lot of the executive producers that take a lot of money up front. Or in the case of, let's say, Superman Returns, a movie with a massive budget, largely because of the failed attempts at trying to get Superman off the ground before then, only add into that budget. It's a Hollywood accounting is one of the craziest things ever. But when we look at where things are going right now in regards for like, you could argue the indie space or maybe like the mid to low budget space. One of the biggest tools that's going to be helping people is going to be artificial intelligence. But if you were to listen to, let's say, uh, the strikes from 2023, right, uh, so, you know, this this image here, uh, you'll see again in a moment. But this is the AI reckoning uh, title headline from the Los Angeles Chronicle uh, with the strikes from 2023, where there was a big push to try to find ways to curb AI's involvement into Hollywood, or at least forced involvement. A lot of it was hyperbolic, a lot of it was made up, a lot of it was very much just based upon rumors on the internet, especially with SAG, uh, only for SAG to then go and sign deals with voice cloning companies, right? So it's kind of funny uh, how they're so anti-AI until they aren't, right? Depending on the deals that can be made. But today, Jason Bloom angered a lot of people. Jason Bloom, uh, you know, the uh, or Blum, if I'm saying it incorrectly, someone will correct me. But Jason Blum of Blumhouse has made a name for himself in the recent years as being a master of horror. He is a man who understands the horror genre, a man who understands what audiences wants in regards to watching scary, spooky, creepy uh, films. And he's made a lot of money doing it. Now, in the last year, you've seen a lot of fall off. From Blumhouse. You've seen a lot of fallout. Um, a lot of people aren't happy with what's going on over there because they feel the quality has dropped. And so I don't necessarily know if this announcement today where they have partnered with Meta, this would be Facebook's parent company, on new AI creative industry feedback program. They are basically working with some filmmakers in order to create um, AI content and, and find ways to make it useful for people who are in the industry to make the content that they want to make. But more importantly, I think what they want to do is they wanted to, to inspire those up and coming filmmakers to use it in a very creative way, which ultimately when you get down into it, the nitty gritty, the low budget, mid budget, no budget filmmakers are going to be the ones that are going to show you how this stuff is done in a way that is going to be uh, apl applicable and also cheaper. And we need to remember that because these are the people that are going to be like the beta testers of it. And I know that's kind of a whole thing. But uh, Jason Bloom put out this tweet today. We worked with a few filmmakers, including uh, Anish uh, Chagantri, to, to get to Chaganti, sorry if I mispronounced that, and had them test out Meta AI tool, Meta Movie Gen. Check out what Anish put together in I Hate AI. Now, I want to, before I show you guys this clip, uh, look at this guy here, Nick Roberts. Dude, why? I hope Art the Clown in his bag of practical effects and box office dominance finds a little Anish and shows him how to make a movie. It sounds kind of, um, kind of threatening, to be honest with you. There's been a lot of that. A lot of people who are very upset with Bloom and them teaming up with Meta and exploring this new technology. But if you haven't been paying attention to what's coming out of the AI video space, if you've had your head in the sand and haven't really been wanting to have that discussion, well, let's talk about that because we need to talk about that. And I'm going to show you guys the video here. It's three minutes. It's an interesting little short, but it gives you an idea of just what they are trying to accomplish. I hate AI. From everything that I have been told, AI is going to hurt my industry. How could I possibly tell a story about why AI was good for us when all I could see from where I'm standing was bad? So I wrote my dad. Little Anish. Who was that again? Anish, Anish. Little Anish grew up in San Jose, California. His parents didn't have a lot of money, but they did have a camera. Instructions of the Noah. And all he would do with it was make movies. All right, rolling in three, two, one, 
Action. This is a movie I made when I was 10. It's super cringe now, but I remember when I made it, I wanted it to be set in Manhattan. Okay, not quite Manhattan, but for 10-year-old me, dude, that's kind of incredible. This next scene was from a movie I made called Hostage, about an army vet played by me who breaks into this high-security vault, whatever, it's dumb, but it was supposed to be set in a bank. And this scene with my little brother in the mask was supposed to be an alien, but all we had was an old Halloween costume. The thing I like about this tool is that little Anish would have still had to make the movie. Is the camera recording? He'd still have had to write a story, plan the shots, get the cameras, force his brother to act take after take after take. I hate AI. People in the world. But with a tool like this, I don't know. Maybe I'd have just dreamed a little bigger. Now, it's a sweet little video. Little Lanesh talking about growing up in San Jose his parents not having a lot of money, but they had a video camera and he wanted to use it to make movies, giving his forcing his brother and his friends to be in his little films. And how often are those stories championed by filmmakers? You ever seen the show, the Goldbergs, right? Ran for 10 seasons on ABC. That whole show is about Adam F. Goldberg and his love of movies and his love of everything, pop culture and how it influenced him in the 1980s. And that's what the entire show is about. And oftentimes they showed his own home movies from when he was a kid, stuff he worked on with his friends and his family. It is a point or a term of endearment in many ways for filmmakers to show off their earlier works and how, according to Anesh here, uh, how cringe they are. Your earlier stuff is cringe. I look back at some of my stuff from college and I'm like, oh, dear God, what was I thinking? This is terrible. Stuff did not age well. It aged horribly. But then again, if you had the ability to use something like artificial intelligence to be able to give you some of those effects, to expand upon the things you're trying to build, to help you with sound effects, to help you with, with visual effects and all those things in a way that would allow a more compelling story to be told, wouldn't you use those tools? And that's ultimately what they're getting at here. This is ultimately what Bloomhouse or Blumhouse, whatever, uh, and everybody at Meta are trying to get at. Same with Sora, Kling AI, and, and, a, and Runway, you know, all those guys. They are trying to provide tools for people to be able to use to better tell their stories, tools for creatives and filmmakers to be able to utilize to do things they weren't previously able to do. And the problem right now, the biggest problem that we have are all the people who are gatekeepers. That would be like SAG and how Fran Drescher and Duncan Crabtree Ireland lied, lied, lied last year about a lot of that stuff involving AI. And how uh, at the end of the day, you know, the writers from the WGA, guess what? They can use it if they want to use it. That's part of the deal. They just can't be forced to use it, which is great. There needs to be regulations, obviously, on all this stuff. And there needs to be ways to make sure that it's it's trained on ethical content. If that can even be obtained anymore, I don't even know. But outside of all of that, looking at the technology, I think a lot of people out there simply just do not understand what it is. They don't understand how it comes together and they're fearful of the future because what they're afraid of are once again being left in the dust. And I think a lot of filmmakers out there, uh, uh, you know, and I, I lived in L.A. for a few years, bitterness, cynicalness, cynicalness, nihilism, all of these things exist. 
Okay, because you have someone going to L.A. and they think they're doing it the right way because they, they read all the books and the books say, here's what you have to do. They go to all the seminars and the seminars say, here's what you have to do. They go to they pay for all those classes and the classes and, and the mentors and they say, this is what you have to do. Right. You got you know, you got to if you can't go to a film school, then you've got to go and shoot movies and get them into festivals. You got to go broke doing it. You got to go broke traveling to all the festivals in order to meet the people in order to hopefully exchange business cards and to one day then be brought in because you, you, someone knows you. And quite frankly, that is a way of doing it, but that is what they tell you you need to do. We no longer live in a world where that is necessary. We no longer live in a world where filmmakers have to be financially burdened by that. They don't have to be anymore. And this is what's going to democratize and really open things up. And what's sad about it, what's really, really, really sad about it is that so many people are just deathly, deathly, deathly afraid of anything to do with artificial intelligence because they don't understand how it can benefit them. And they're fearful because people out there who are probably their betters to an extent are the people that are out there telling them that you are wrong for liking it. Well, to them, I say this, do you have AIDS? Artificial intelligence derangement syndrome, because that, my friends, is where we are. And we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. There were people who freaked out when CG started becoming a thing. There were people who freaked out when digital started taking over 35 millimeter filming. There were people who freak out over every technological advancement because those are the people who have been trained in the technology format that is now considered obsolete. You should not look with the, at the invention of this kind of technology as being anything other than a tool to benefit your creativity. Those worlds that you envisioned when you were younger, those worlds you envision now, guess what? In some respects, you can then showcase that. You can visualize that in a way that is going to allow you to do it. Now, there are people out there that are, are worried about losing their job. And I'm just going to end it with this. You will not be replaced by artificial intelligence. You will be replaced by people who know how to use it. So if you are not utilizing everything to the best of your ability, if you are not at the forefront of technology to figure out how to use it to make your career expand and grow, then that is on you. And the people that are poo-pooing on this the most are people who are just fearful. They are fearful because they have AIDS. Yes, it's a joke. Yes, it's meant to be a joke, but it's also very true. Artificial intelligence derangement syndrome is what is going to be the biggest hurdle for a lot of people in Hollywood to get over publicly, publicly. But make no mistake, folks, make no mistake the, your favorite filmmakers are already playing with this technology privately. And when the time is right, they will jump on it because that is what is going to be the future. Anyway, I look forward to your thoughts on this, good, bad, or the other. Thank you. My name is Matt Jarbo. Like this uh, video if you want. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I cover all sorts of things, Hollywood-related, movie, you know, opinions, that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see you later.